Pardon moi. Can I sit here? Mm. You stole my seat. Yeah, that's my seat. This mm -hmm. me. That's so many eyeball. Hello there everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I wanted to share with you some of my favorite practices that are very well suited to the broom closeted witch. And uh, we do have a little bit of a helper today. <laughs> are you helping too? Yeah, I've got two helpers today. Same cool. Through my years of sharing practices here and teaching witchcraft and magic and all of that good stuff, I have tried to have an emphasis on teaching uh, every now and again things that are good for those of you that are still in the broom closet and not really ready to share your practice with maybe everyone you're living with or what have you. There are a million different reasons someone would want to keep their practice to themselves and that is up to everybody to decide for themselves. But as with anything, it is always nice to have a, a couple of ideas and suggestions for practice for things that you maybe are a little hung up on or just need some help figuring out some different ideas. I personally find that inspiration is always welcome for me and so that's the goal of this video, to give you some new ideas and inspiration. The main focus of this video will be on preparations and types of spell work or practice that you can employ in your practice that is a little bit more under the radar and easy to do regardless of the situation you're in. These are practices that are also useful to people who are not in the broom closet and do practice openly. It is really here for anybody. So with that said, let's get into it. First and foremost, I always recommend kitchen magic. Food is such a central component to life, and many of us spend a lot of time in the kitchen preparing food. And as it is such a central component to life, you can very easily add ingredients consciously to kind of weave energy and work spells for what you need in your life. This is very easily achieved with the addition of choice herbs and spices. I personally am very fond of adding infusions to my cooking, especially infused milk. That's really easy to add to a lot of baked goods. So something like chamomile milk, you would make it the same way that you make tea. Just instead of using water, you use milk. I've done this with a bunch of different flavors, but my favorite will always be chamomile. You can also craft infused oils with dried herbs to add that to cooking. That's a very, very easy way to uh, add certain energies that is just a base that goes with so many things that you may work in the kitchen. And while I do personally prefer to work kitchen magic for things that help with the self, maybe emotional things, you can really work them for anything. I have a recipe for prosperity cookies that are my go-to for just about anything that I need for prosperity. But you of course don't have to stop there. I love working with ginger to help enhance my workings and add energy to myself. And adding herbs to your cooking is just a great way to set an intention for the day. Another form of preparation that I find works really well to go under the radar are herbal medicine preparations, but done as magic or medicine and or both. We all know about teas. Those are a beautiful medicinal preparation and you can work with teas and magic, creating specific blends that work better for the needs that you have. You can take teas internally or you can even bathe in them. I find this is a really good way to work uh, cleansing spells on the self and teas can also translate to infusions used to wash around the home, wash tools, or just set the energy of a space. You can kind of uh, spray it around or flick the water around to have a similar effect. Big stretch. Okay. <laughs> similar to cooking, we also can use oils topically or make them into salves. 
This is another wonderful way to work magic for the self, to carry it on you. You can make this for any purpose. Now, of course, with medicinal preparations, I do tend to prefer to work uh, with healing intentions in these. So making things that are anti-anxiety or to help remedy burns or inflammation. But you can also craft these for prosperity, for protection, or anything else your heart desires. Now, outside of kitchen preparations and medicinal preparations, there are still some uh, traditional witchy preparations that you can employ that aren't so obviously witchy. And these are things that mainly can serve to look like a decoration and not something that is so obviously a spell, such as hanging herb bundles or wreaths this is a great way to tuck a bunch of herbs together to leave up for a long time. Hanging herb bundles are some of my favorite spells to work for the home or for a space, and I most always have them up for means of protection. And since they always look like a very beautiful decoration, that's all that people need to know about it, that it is there to be beautiful. I also personally love using simmer pots. This is a wonderful alternative to smoke cleanses or protections or anything. It similarly works to fill the space, but instead of using smoke, you use steam. You get to choose herbs of your liking with the intentions that you want to set. And they smell wonderful most of the time, so if anyone ever asks, you can say that you just want to uh, make the house smell a little nicer. And maybe up the humidity. That can be a great thing, especially in the winter. I know it gets very dry in my home, and if you are in a similar climate to me or a burn a wood stove, they are great for the winter. And so who's gonna ask? Who's gonna wonder? And so with that, those are my favorite preparations and practices for the Broom Closeted Witch. You can have access to just about any intention of magic through means that are just a little bit less traditional at times. So regardless of the situation you find yourself in, you can have a beautiful, rich practice that fulfills your heart and desires and needs. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any other practices that you do on a regular basis that are a little bit more under the radar. I would love to learn more and I'm sure plenty of other people would love to hear about them as well. And with that, thank you so much for watching. If you can and would like to, I'd really appreciate it if you checked out my Patreon. There I share art, herbal profiles, book recommendations, and monthly workshops on topics that you all choose. Patreon is really what keeps things afloat over here, so I am eternally grateful to all of you over there, but of course I know it's not for everyone and that is perfectly okay. Beyond Patreon, I do have another channel where I share vlogs of my day-to-day -day life, more magic, herbalism, all of those good things, so if that's something that you're interested in, go ahead and check that out. Both of these will be linked in the description down below. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you are having a lovely day and I will see you again soon.